We're back and we have big support for one on one with CG, which is now brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Their products are made for your family jewels and CGs. My experience with Manscaped has been phenomenal. I mean, I love to, to smell good, be cleaned up before I walk out of the penthouse. And I'm telling you, you have to get dialed in because do you want to impress your lady or not? I know I do. Their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. The Lawnmower 4.0 is waterproof and also has a 4000K LED spotlight you need for a more precise shave. How cool is it to do in the dark? I mean, that's, that's unheard of. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code WITHCG, W I T H C G at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code with CG. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the right job with Manscaped. On to the episode, baby. Let's go. All right, we're back on the podcast, and I've got a beauty on the airwaves today. He's a current professional hockey player with the San Jose Sharks, and all I've got to say is Magna Mania, baby. (laughs) <laughs> Jacob Magna Max, welcome on the podcast. Oh, thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Yeah, man. How's uh, how's summer been? I know you've been back on the East Coast with the family. How's it all been with the the fam and all that? It's been good. Uh, we just had uh, another another girl in uh, the end of May there, so she's about three. So adjusting to life with two, but uh, no complaints here. We got out to uh, San Jose on Saturday, so it's been a bit of a hectic few days, but we're getting settled and getting everything set up. Yeah, so where did you spend most of your time? Were you in Florida with the family? Where were you um, kind of split. We were in uh, like outside of Philly for half the summer, and then we were in Florida for the second half. So it was it was a good little change. My wife's from up there, and then my family's down in Florida, and that's where I skate and stuff. So it worked right. out. So the girl dad journey continues. Yeah, I'm riding that train. Right, you got row now. It's Evie and Row, right? Yep, Evie okay. and Row. So yeah, we just keep uh, keep going on the girl train. We'll see where it takes us. So, so how does Boomer feel about that? He's like, "Holy shit, Dad! I'm overwhelmed with all this estrogen." Yeah, well, he's my guy. He's my. <laughs> I'm never letting him go. He's the only thing keeping <laughs> keeping the balance of power somewhat. Right. So, have you gotten the Evie on skates yet? So she hasn't been on skates. She's been on the ice with me holding her. She's walked around, but we haven't. He didn't skate, so I think it's probably coming at some point this year, but we'll have to wait and see. That's good. That's great. So what I want to do is before we get into everything, I want to tell the audience, the new listeners, about how we're connected. Okay. We, have a, we have a family friend connection with the Thompson family, and there's two boys with Cole and Wyatt, and let's get right into Cole real quick. I mean, if Mr. They, Miami. Mi- Mr. Miami. Oh, that's dangerous, dude. <laughs> Mr. Miami, Mr. Marathon, too. I got next. I got to say, if, if David Goggins and Conor McGregor had a baby, it'd be Cole Thompson. <laughs> it'd be CT. I saw him. He was at Rose Baptism uh, yeah. a couple weekends ago, and he's it's perfect for him. He loves the sunshine. He loves the action. Right. Um, I don't think he's ever coming back. <laughs> he's he's set, huh? He's set out there. Yeah, he's doing. And you know what? The only thing I will say, the guy still travels. He's he's in Vegas. He was back in San Diego. He was doing it all. So. It's uh, it's crazy the amount of stuff that he does. Like for a guy, he he might live in Miami, but he's everywhere still. Right. It, it, pop him. He's living the bachelor life. You know what's cool though is that when you got drafted, but with Anaheim, you lived obviously out here. You have the Thompson family to lean on. Now he's got your parents out there. Yeah, it, it is funny how how it reversed like that. It was it was always great before camp and during camp, staying with the Thompsons and Ron and Trissa and the boys would stop yeah. in. Wyatt was there quite a bit. And now, yeah, Cole's got my parents a short 30, 40 minutes away. And um, he comes up there every once in a while to go to dinner and just to kind of relax. And it's been good, too, because he's gotten Trista to come down there. And uh, that way my mom and her can spend some time together. And, and they always have have a blast. So it's, it's been a good connector again. Yeah, it's good, it's good for them. Good for Trista, too. You know, with, with Wyatt, this guy's like the spiritual guru, man. He's a part-time resident in Mexico, too. <laughs> I, I, he's another guy. I need to I need to give him a call too because everything I hear, he's just going a million different directions. I I saw him in Florida when he was on his way to somewhere in the Dominican, and then he's back in California. Now he's talk, He's been talking about moving to San Diego for since since I was there, so five years ago, and he still hasn't done it. But I I just he's a wild card. He's got so many ideas. Call me every day. You know he does, and you know what? He's just 
got such a such a pure heart and he just wants yeah. to enjoy life and he doesn't need much to, to keep himself happy and he's just he's a free spirit that's right i love that about him so i want to touch on your family you know we talked about your family before from top to bottom you guys are all athletes i mean studs i gotta tell you so what the i didn't touch on with you is really your dad your dad being an nfl player so why didn't you take the route in the football? You know, you're 6'6". Six, six, you could have went to the NFL if you wanted to. Come on now. But you took the route in hockey. Why was the reason, you know, you didn't look up to you had to go through that? that well, I don't think anybody knew I was going to be 6'6". Six, six. That's that's first <laughs> things first because I, I loved basketball. And okay. I stopped playing because I, I was little. And I, I didn't – I wasn't going – going very far in that but my dad never wanted us to uh to play football when we were really young he wanted us to wait till we were like 12 years old I think and at that point we were already so into hockey it was you couldn't really do both um it would have been really tough to, to juggle schedule wise when you already had uh another my brother obviously playing hockey and my sister was doing a million things so I don't think the family could have figured out uh, a way to make the schedule work anyways and it was something where we were just already so far down a certain path that we just wanted to keep going Right. So what, what kind of made you take the avenue with hockey? What made you want to go that route? Uh, you know, it's funny that being from Florida and my whole family, like we moved to Chicago for uh, my dad's work. And then uh, we just kind of started going to the ice rink. I don't, I don't know what it was. There was nothing else to do in the winter. So my sister figure skated. We played hockey. Um, and then it was just we, we really enjoyed it. And it was such a popular sport uh, in Chicago. So we just started. We were, I felt like we were at the rink every day and. Uh, we fell in love with it and just kind of took off from there. Right. And it's it's worked out for you perfectly. So, you know, something about family with you and Jason, your brother's playing pro hockey, too. He's with the Colorado Avalanche organization. You guys have been living out the same dream, which is, which is awesome. Um, your brother just was on a team that just won the Stanley Cup with with Colorado. How nice yep. was it to see him a part of that? And what did he have to say with the whole journey? Yeah, it was really cool. And you know what? They included him in, in just about everything. He was at the parade. He was on the ice of the cup. So he was super appreciative and obviously really enjoyed the moment. And, you know, getting to spend time with those guys and having played at the beginning of the year, um, it was it was pretty cool that they included him in all that stuff. And um, just he was super excited and appreciative. And he, he loves it out there. He loves that organization. Um, I think it's been three or four years now he's been out there. And um, I, I think he'll probably stay there uh, as long as long as he can because he really, he really does love it not a bad spot to be at no it's great it's regardless of which league you're in it's it's a great spot so he uh he loves it out there his family loves it it's it's always great to go visit him right and there's a bright future with that organization you know but it would be kind of nice to see both magnas on the same nhl team i know we've been at some point talking about it we've been trying well we're gonna get there at some point we'll figure it out uh you know we played together for a year in college and that was that was a lot of fun and so hopefully we'll be able to, to recreate that at some point here down the road. Right. So what I want to do is I want to transition to San Jose. You know, the big year you had last year. You, you had a solid year, man. You got a lot of playing time with them. You know, how, how did you feel it all went for you and the team last year? You know what? I was, it was a bit of a weird year still to start with COVID. And when guys got COVID, they had to sit out the 10 days. And that was pretty much what got me an opportunity. Um, I think we had like they had four defensemen go down with it early in the year. And luckily enough, I, I got called up. I think I had like three hours notice before game time for the first game. And um, I don't think much was expected of the team in general. And, you know, we played pretty well. We won we won a few games while a lot of their their regulars were out. Um, and I think for me, it just gave me an opportunity to show the staff that, you know, I could play at that level and that I, I could be relied upon. And um, the nice part was, you know what, they saw it and, they didn't just kind of say, okay, that was nice, but you're going to go back to the minors. They, they fought for me to stay up there. Um, and then, you know, I, I got an opportunity and I just kind of ran with it. Um, it's one of those things where uh, there's not much that separates guys from the minors and uh, the NHL. And, um, you know, it's all about taking advantage of your opportunity. And that was, that was the longest run time I'd, I'd ever gotten um, as far as an opportunity. And, you know, I just tried every day to make the most of it. And, you know, I think uh, I was, I was super happy with, the way I played and you know I think the team we were we were in it till I would say right about on the all-star break and then we we kind of fell off a bit but um, it was a lot of fun and you know just competing every night and being in games and you know I'm hoping that more of the same for this year right and I think you really took advantage of that opportunity and you did real well 
you know, something you did was you got a lot of playing time with Brent Burns, Eric Carlson, guys who have been in the league forever. How, and especially, I mean, a ton of time with Brent, with Burnsy. How was that, spending time with him on and off the ice to be around that type of leadership with him and Eric? He was awesome. He was one of my favorite guys, and we're going to miss him a lot this year. He He's such a good player, and, you know, he plays – the, the heaviest minutes against the best players and he still produces at a pretty unbelievable level offensively and um he's he's great to play with he always wants the puck he's always talking he's always helping you out um and that's all you can ask for from your from your partner especially being a guy that didn't have as much experience he was great for me um just with confidence and encouraging me um and to, just to play my game and you know and then like you said eric too eric i got to play with a bit and he's just just so talented it's like get yeah, find out where he needs the puck and you just kind of get out of the way because he's just instant offense and playing defense. It's one of those things where I look at him and there's not a whole lot of like similarities as far as stuff I can do versus stuff he does, but it worked well as far as a pairing goes, kind of balancing each other out and stuff. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a blast play with him too. And just sometimes you got to make sure you're not just watching him because the stuff he does <laughs> It's just like, oh, oh, awesome. Wow, that worked. <laughs> and it, he just does it over and over, and it's uh, it's pretty cool to be around. Right. And I don't think – I couldn't think of uh, two other guys you could spend time with to play with other than those guys. I mean, they're they're all-stars. They know how yeah. to get the shit and they're done. still so good. I know Bernsey's uh, getting older, but he, he hasn't lost the thing. And, you know, Eric's had some injuries, but he's still when – he's, when he's healthy and he's going, he's as good as anybody. So they're both unbelievable players and – and really good people and it was, it was a lot it was really fun to be around them on and off the ice and just kind of pick their brains and kind of help me along um through my first kind of full season there in the nhl right and now with bernsey in carolina this is kind of like you have that role you can take now and and being a leader right somewhat you've already had experience in being a leader with being a captain and assistant how how does it feel to know that it's there if you want to take it and and to just run with it honestly yeah you know what i i think you know when you're uh, those kind of roles, it doesn't matter whether you're wearing a letter or not or how long you played. It's something that just you got to be who you are. And that's kind of a style I've developed and just something that I've been asked to do so many times that it's kind of second nature. Um, and it's something I enjoy. And, you know, I, I do have a lot of experience as far as I can relate to the young guys. I can relate to the older guys um, and just situations and when things happen, um, whether good or bad. So it's, it's something I definitely embrace. And uh something that I, i'm cognizant of uh all the time right that's awesome so you know something that i think a lot of hockey fans don't really get to see and get a point of view on is the nature of the business with hockey you know you you build these relationships you know you spend most of your time with your teammates outside of you know your home right all year yep. You know, how is it to see like a friend like Bernsey or a guy like Shea Theodore, Brandon Montour, these guys that just move on into their new chapter in their career? How does it affect you and your, you know, it's, in your it's one of the weirdest things. And it's like it, you really there's there is no other profession where you're just like my coworker. He just he just got traded to across the country to, to a different company. Like he's just gone. Like now he's with them. And it's it's such a weird thing. And um, it's funny. I was with Monty in Florida for uh, a couple weeks there, we were just working out together and skating. Um, and then, like, I see Shay from time to time. And it's cool to have those connections kind of wherever you go, where you have uh, former teammates and friends. And it's nice to get together and have a meal. But it's it's one of the crazier things. Like, you really couldn't explain it. And it's like, guys, even I think about guys, like, you just bought a house somewhere and you are you think you're going to be there. And then you get traded a month later. Like, how do you explain that to your kids, to your, to your family, your friends? It's like, wait, I thought you were, you were going to be there for a while while well, we thought so too, <laughs> but then this happened. So it's, it's such a crazy lifestyle. It's so much fun. And um, it's really cool to have kind of connections in every city with, with certain people, but it's, uh, it's definitely different than, than most professions. No, no doubt. And it's, it's, you know, it's something that I think a lot of people don't hear about in the background. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, it, it's guys, it is what it is as far as being a pain in the ass. You know, we get, we get taken care of very well and it's, it's a privilege to play. So it's not something that's like, Oh, shucks. It's a bad thing, but it's just a, it's a weird dynamic that, that people aren't used to. Right. No doubt. You know, something I want to, I want to move on to is the fact that you played for team USA with the world championships and the guy behind the bench happened to be David Quinn, your new yeah. head, your new head coach. Yep. 
how nice is it to just, you know, be familiar with him, his style of play, what he wants, and just to kind of have that chance to move forward into this new season with him behind the bench? Yeah, well, first of all, that was that was a dream come true for me to play for USA. It was uh, it was really cool. And my wife was uh, she was due about two weeks after the tournament was supposed to end. And we were sitting there going like, are you sure I can go? Are you sure I can go? And obviously she knew how much it meant to me and to, to us to be able to do it. And she was like, absolutely. Uh, you have to. So going over there was was just such an honor and a privilege. It was such a cool experience. Um, and the fact that uh, Coach Quinn was the coach there it was nice to um, I knew who he was, obviously, from the Rangers and college and stuff like that. So it was pretty cool experience just getting to, to play for play for him and the other coaches and it's it's always good when you get to get feedback from other people you know you have the same coaches for a while but it's always nice to have a fresh set of eyes on your game to help you along and I think him and Blash and uh coach Hastings and uh even uh Granado they were all great as far as that and like just trying to learn and pick up things to add to your game and then of course you find out the Sharks obviously late in the summer fired the whole staff and lo and behold, you're going, okay, well, I just signed here. What's going to happen. And then they bring him in. So it is nice to have a little familiarity and, you know, I have played a little bit under his system and kind of what he expects and, and how he likes his team supply. So it, it'll be a little bit of a help uh, going to the training camp here as we get running. Right. It's nice to know who he, you both know each other. It's beautiful. Right. No, it's a hundred percent. There's a level of comfort there and getting to play right. from a little bit. So it's, it's definitely um, a positive. I'd feel wrong if I didn't, you know, bring up the the past year's coaching staff because obviously they they believed in you, they counted on you. How was it spending time with those guys as well? It was it was great. You know what? I I had a lot of respect for those guys. When I was called up the first time with COVID, actually, Coach Bugner he had COVID too, so he wasn't uh, around. So it was Mads and uh, and John McLean were the the two guys kind of running it, and they both were were awesome with me. And then when Boogie came back. Um, he, he played a big role, I think, in, in getting me back up there. And, um, he was, he was awesome with me. You know, they, they just, they wanted you to compete and they, they played, they played guys according to how, how they were playing. And it was, they were fair, they were honest and they held guys accountable. So I couldn't have asked for more. And you know what? I think, I think we played really hard as a team, uh, for those guys night in and night out. We didn't always have the best results, um, but guys respected them and, and they were really good coaches and good people. So we'll definitely miss them. Um, but at the same time, you know, we're excited for the, for the new coaching staff and just kind of, there's been a lot of turnover in the organization this summer and it seems like they're charting a new path. So there's a lot of excitement in the building right now. A lot of new faces. Mike Greer is the GM as well. Yep. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, he's just met, I met him today and, uh, you know, there's a lot of good, a lot of good new people that are, that are coming in and obviously the Barracuda have a new staff and there's new assistant GMs and, um, we got a new trainer, we got a, uh, a new strength coach. So things are Things are definitely changing um, at all levels, but uh, I think there's a lot of positive steps being, being taken. Right, no doubt. You know, something I want to bring up is a, a former teammate and friend of yours, uh, someone who I actually just had on, Chase DeLeo. Dells. Yeah, he couldn't stay away from home, huh? He, had, he could. He did, just did one year, one year on the East Coast, and he crawled right back. Those animals mean a lot to him. I think. Well, I couldn't. No, that wouldn't mean a lot to him. Was he? Is, he couldn't stand the winters. He could probably stand. freezing his ass off and he, said never again. He needs a good reason to wear the Gucci loafers. Come on, well, now, you can't. I tell you what, you wear those in Utica, you ain't going home with them. Somebody's <laughs> taking them off you. You get frostbit. That's what's going. Oh, happen. that's yeah. See, those those don't last in the snow. I, well, I will say, I think he used to bring them on the road when we would go go places in the winter, but. He, uh, yeah, I'm as happy for him as he signed back in Anaheim and, you know, I know he loves it out there. So he, uh, I'm sure it's, he's going to enjoy that a lot more than he did Utica. To get the chance to play against you too. You got to remember that. that yeah. Well, he did. I could tell he missed me. Yeah. That's it's... it. That's, that's the whole reason why. <laughs> <laughs> but you no, Dallas, Dallas has been great. He's, uh, he had a really good year last year too. Oh yeah. And, uh, and Utica, they had a great team and I think he wound up that, that coach there was this coach in San Diego. So that's right. That that worked out for uh, for him a little bit, but he, uh, I'm sure he's happy to be back on the West Coast. Yeah, and, he, and like I said, he keeps proving himself that he can have a shot. Absolutely, you know, and it's it's one of those things where you got to keep doing it. You can't do it once, and then it's like people forget if you if you have a bad year, what you've done before kind of goes away. So you got to keep doing it over and over, and then eventually, you know, you just hope that that you get the opportunity. Right, no doubt. You know, 
he didn't have any chirps to share, but he did want me to tell you something over the airwaves, and uh, he just wanted me to tell you that he loves you, and he's, yeah, he's happy well, you, made, you made the most of the opportunity last year. That's what he wanted to say. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure it was a little more colorful than that, but I, I, I do appreciate it. He, <laughs> he's, a, he's a really good dude, and he is. Um, he's somebody that I'm always rooting for. Absolutely. That goes both ways. So, um, you know, there's another thing I want to bring up, too, that, you know, him and I were talking about, and that's the fact that you were at Sam Car Sammy Carrick's wedding. That's your buddy. Yes, I was. Yeah, celebrating him and his wife. You know, how did that go with, with celebrating them? But I know you got the chance, you got the chance to, uh, you know, catch up with old friends in, from Anaheim when you played there. And I saw Gibby. Yeah. Gibby was there talking to you as well. Yeah, it was it was a blast, you know, and it was that was a wedding we've been waiting on for a couple of years now. It kept getting pushed back with COVID and um, you know, it was a lot of fun seeing Sammy and I were really close when we were in San Diego and um so are our wives now and it's it was a tough thing to to be apart from them and uh yeah, it was a lot of fun catching up with uh Gibby and there's some other Anaheim guys that were there and it it was it was a really it was a great wedding, it was beautiful. Um and it was uh it was definitely a lot of fun. So we uh, we enjoyed ourselves and we guys like Liambus, um, who was the San Diego guy. We got to see him for a bit, and there's a bunch of others. So it was it was fun. I was I honestly was thinking Chase was going to be there, but I don't know what happened. <laughs> Too busy moving, moving yeah, all shit back crazy. to the West Coast. He was he was refused to come back east. <laughs> Didn't matter. That it was the summer. He's like I'm tapped out. Sorry, Megs. Yeah. Well, um, you know we'll get him. We'll, I'll be there for his wedding hopefully one day. Right there you go. There you go. You know, he did say that you and Sammy Carrick used to go at it back in the day as boys. Oh, a couple no, of wrestling just, matches or what, bud? No, no, no wrestling <laughs> matches. I'm pretty sure somebody's career got ended in Austin with Sammy and a couple guys wrestling in a hotel room. I forget what, what happened. But no, me and, yeah, me and Sammy were always uh, – it was you know, it was a good dynamic because I kind of was ran the D and he was with the forwards. And right. um, we were roommates on the road and we always had a blast. Man. He was – he was funny, and uh, we we had always had a great time. So whenever I'm I'm in Anaheim or whatever, and I I have a chance to see him, I go over for dinner or we go somewhere. So it's it's always good catching up with him. He's he's an awesome guy. And you know what? We've kind of taken similar career paths, so it's it's been pretty cool seeing him up in Anaheim. And he's he's the only one who was able to to stay there the whole time and and get it done. <laughs> and he he refused to leave San Diego, which you know it worked out for him. And now he's up in Anaheim. So I don't uh, I don't blame him for not not wanting to leave there couldn't couldn't resist leaving the pb lifestyle seems to me you know what he lived it he lived it as he good as anybody it. oh my he, god he earned he earned that lifestyle for sure mavericks knows him real well i bet oh do they ever <laughs> so i mean he's kind of taken on a pretty good role with Anaheim. he knows what he has to do to stick in, in that lineup he's tough and he can play absolutely he's he's totally figured it out and i always said when we were in the american league you know what he was he was he perfected what he what he was in the American League, and there was nothing more for him to do down there because he he was a menace every night, and he he could fight, he could score, he was putting up points like nobody's business. He was so so dynamic for us, and then he got up there, and you know what he he knew what his his role was going to be, and he just accepted it and embraced it, and he's played great for them. You know, and he pitches in offensively every now and then, he plays hard, and I don't think there's much more you'd want from a third fourth line guy than what than what he brings. Right. No, definitely. So what's your thoughts on this upcoming year with the team you have now? You know, obviously the new faces, like you said, with management, with players. What's your thoughts on on this upcoming year with the, with the Sharks? You know, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what, what we have. And, you know, we have run a lot of new faces and a lot of guys, it seems like, that like to compete and are big and strong and fast. So I think we're going to be a pretty hard team to play against. I think we're going to we're going to try and go after teams. I don't think we might not have as much goal scoring and skill as, as some teams, but – you know, a lot of times hard work can, can eliminate a lot of those deficiencies. And, you know, I think we're going to have to win a lot of close games. And um, it's going to be something where we're going to compete every night. And I, I think uh, we're going to catch some teams by surprise, hopefully, and be right in the mix there for a playoff spot. I, I believe so, too. Well, in conclusion, I want to tell you this. I'm proud of you, man, because you, <laughs> you've gotten this big opportunity to take advantage of. And you did it. You're taking it and you're running with it. And I really think San Jose is like your new home. You know, they really believe in you. They, they sign you to a new two-year contract. They think you're going to do good things for the organization. And I'm just stoked for you because, you know, you've been waiting for this opportunity for a while, and now it's happening and you're ready to go for this upcoming year to do even better things for the organization. So I just wanted to say that, man. I'm, I'm stoked for you. Pump. I appreciate it, man. You know what? It's one of those things where, 
you know, you keep working for something and you, you don't know if or when it's going to happen. And it just so, so happened to work out that it's, it's here right now and it's in front of me and I'm just doing everything I can to, you know, make the most of it and take advantage. And, you know, and I've been, you know, sometimes your places and for whatever reason, it just doesn't happen for you. And then sometimes it does. And, um, you know, right now I'm in a, a pretty good situation here and I just got to show them every day that, you know, I belong and just take it one day at a time. And hopefully, uh, hopefully I can make, make a pretty good career out of it. Keep riding it out, man. You're going to do great things. It's just going to keep getting better. <laughs> I hope so. And, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me on. It's and, been a blast. Anytime you need me, you just let me know. Always, baby. You know, CG and the Thompson boys, we'll be at Crypto or Honda Center whenever you need us. We'll come support you. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, you'll be in your hoodie half asleep like last time. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> said last time you were right behind the bench half asleep in your hoodie. Oh, get the hell out of here. It was, it was 80 degrees get outside. A... <laughs> and your hoodie on. That's Is that right? <laughs> You gotta yeah, get a, you gotta life. get at least one trip in on the podcast. <laughs> I love you, buddy. All right, man. Well, hey, good chatting and catching up. Give the give the family my love, man. All right. Ah, uh, well, dude. Same talk, to you. Talk bye. soon, bye. Bye, bye.